our two weeks in, just, just an overview. How do you feel about the way your defense has performed? Uh, uh, both good and bad. I mean, it's uh, uh, the results still not what we want. Um, you know, if you look at at yards and all that stuff, we don't we don't look at at that stuff. It, the the bottom line is points. Trying to keep points off the board. Trying to give ourselves a chance to win every week. And um, the thing that I'm excited about is that our style was represented uh, last week. That's the biggest thing. That's all across the board for the entire team. So. Um, if you're looking from a progress standpoint, I don't look at so much production as much as what it looks like on tape. And the, the violence, the speed, attacking the ball, um, that's, that's what I'm excited about. You guys are on the field for 79 plays, so it would stand to reason that maybe late in the game you would wear down a little bit. But do you think that that's the case? But also just how much do you guys have to emphasize third downs and getting off the field, you know, those opportunities? Third down is a... Uh, Third down is a major uh, emphasis. Every week it is. Uh, we faced 12 more plays than we needed to that first drive just because of a uh, lack of execution in that first third down and nine. Um, we're in a great position to get off the field. We got it to the kill zone. And now we just got to get off the field. We got to tackle. And uh, it takes all 11 run to the ball because a lot of times that first guy does miss. Um, but uh, we can help ourselves a lot by, by being better on third down for sure. That lack of execution on that particular play, uh, it was a read option play, a zone read. Was the linebacker supposed to scrape, or, or how do you coach that particular? That, that was a fourth and one. Uh, that was the uh, second sequence of third down. Uh, yeah, we, we had uh, quarterback count for just a lack of execution. Robert, obviously every defense wants to be strong up the middle, but with Ruben already out and now Eric out, kind of what does that mean for this defense? Uh, the train keeps rolling. NFL stops for nobody, so we just got to we, uh, we got to get the next guy ready, and there's no excuses in this league. We just got to keep rolling, get ready to play. How did, you, how did Tart come in this morning? Feeling any better than yesterday? Uh, you know what? I haven't uh, actually sat and asked him. I know he's getting all his rehab. He's trying to get himself ready for Thursday. If he can't go. Is it Adrian Colbert next man up? Um, uh, you, you have Colbert and uh, uh, Lorenzo both. They'd be competing for that. It's that, I guess that was my question. Uh, with the strong safety playing close to the box a lot, are you looking for a certain amount of size in that player? Because I know Lorenzo's normally at the, at the free safety spot. Uh, you know, you have a prototype, but uh, I, I think football players come in all shapes and sizes. They have all kinds of uh, measurables. So, yeah, you, you'd love to have a certain measurable, but uh, uh, right now the, the men we have in our, in our room uh, have to get it done. Is there a, a cutoff time to where, you, you know, if you need to add somebody to the roster over the next couple of days, is, is there a time that you would need to know to make that decision? Um, you know, that, one, that one's more for Kyle and, uh, and John, to be honest with you. Robert, with the 79 snaps and then Thursday night, you know, it's, Thursday night's already a tough challenge, but if you do any, anything else, uh, or can you do anything else just to make sure they're as fresh as possible after that performance Sunday? Uh, that's uh, Kyle's already done a great job delivering that message. Ray Wright and our uh, training uh, training crew, uh, Ferg and all them, they do a great job. Um, shoot, my message to the guys is whatever they ask, double it up. So uh, this is a big mental uh, get your body right week, and uh, and usually Thursday night is about uh, which team can show up the freshest. So uh, the whole mindset is about us and getting ourselves ready to play over scheme. I'm sure you stressed all last week the importance of containing Russell Wilson in the pocket on that touchdown drive in the fourth quarter. He broke contain a few times. What were the breakdowns on those plays? Uh, you know what? I'll be honest. Russell, uh, he's been doing it for God knows how many years now, but he's, he's, he, that's what he does. And uh, we had him. We had him in our grasp. We felt like we had a great plan for him, but there's a reason why he gets paid so much money. Uh, he makes plays. He makes things happen, and, and I still can't. I, I still uh, am awe, I, I'm in awe of the play he made to throw the touchdown, going to his left, throwing across his body, the player wrapped around his ankles, and still to drop a dime where he did. I mean, the, the kid made a hell of a play. Last week you said that one of your goals was for the defense to, to dictate the course of the game, regardless of whether you're getting enough help in offense or not. I know obviously toward the end of the game that, that didn't work, but was there a period there, especially toward the end of the third quarter where you guys were digging in, where you felt that you saw what you would like to see? Uh, midway through the third quarter, I thought we had an opportunity to, to blow the doors open. 
Uh, I think we had our hands on three footballs. Um, one for sure could have been a pick six. And uh, that's where, as a defense, we've got to get greedy. We've got to be opportunistic. And when we have those opportunities, and they, all, they come in bunches. And when you have an opportunity that was a five-minute window there or, or a two-series window in there where I felt like we could have completely blew the doors open, and we missed it. And uh, in this league, momentum shifts so much that when you miss your opportunity, you're leaving the, you're, you're leaving the door open for anything to happen. And, uh, and that's where I just felt like we had a chance to, to really blow it open, but we didn't. We missed the opportunity. For a series there in the first half. He deserves it. He works his tail off, and he works hard. And, uh, and we wanted to make sure we got him uh, some more reps. And, and to be honest with you, I feel like he probably should get a little bit more. And, and it's, it's not an indictment on any of the other players as much as it is a testament to how he works and, and how he prepares himself every week. Is he competing with Ray Ray for, for that starting spot, or are they distinct? It's always, it's always competition. Um, we're going we're gonna to do our best to make sure all, the best 11 are on the field at all times. And, uh, and Brock and Ray, they're, I mean, they, they both have great strengths. Uh, they're, they're different in their, own, uh, in their own way, but they both get the job done. And so it'd be a disservice really to all three of them when you're, uh, you know, it's, it's, it goes back to that mindset of trying to be as fresh as possible. If you have a guy like Brock who can come in and perform the way he does, then you take advantage of it. What are his strengths? What distinguishes him? Uh, he's a great communicator, uh, knows everybody's job on the football field, very, very strong at the point of attack, and he, he is pretty athletic and fast. So he's, he, he's a good linebacker. He's, he's, uh, he, he started a lot of football games for Seattle when, when they needed him, and he performed very, very well, too. So he's, he's put in his time, he's put in his work, and he deserves to play. Did Solomon take a step forward this week? He takes a step forward every day. I mean, I, you want to talk about relentless in his, in his work ethic. Uh, that young man's got a, a chance to be special if he continues working the way he does. We played more snaps than you had originally planned for him, but how did, how did Jimmy Ward hold up over the course of the games for a guy who hadn't played? He, he, he held up well. The feedback was good. Um, Feels good. Man, he looked fast too. <laughs> uh, so it's good to have him back. Hopefully, he can he can stay healthy. Assignment-wise, he was good on everything for yeah. someone. What are the uh, the challenges that Todd Gurley's running style offers you guys? Uh, he's he's shifty. Um, he's got speed. Uh, he does a good job bouncing, getting to the sideline. Uh, they do a really good job stressing your corners. So um, for us, we just got to corral and make sure that we do a good job holding the edges. And uh, keep him inside the box. Is he the fastest running back you guys will face so far? Uh, he might be. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, you know, they they all they all they all look fast to me. Shoot. <laughs> Sorry. All, Rawls was pretty fast last week, and so was that little rookie. You know, their their play speed is was pretty quick. Is there anything in particular that you've noticed Jared Goff is doing better this year that that's led to some more success this year than than, than last? Uh, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to play golf last year. I didn't even look at their tape last year, so I, you know, I couldn't tell you. I know the the people who were here a year ago think he's he's an, an improved quarterback, and uh, he's got a great scheme uh, attached to him, and so you you can see the improve that uh, with people that that were here a year ago have mentioned that he is much improved. So from your standpoint, maybe only Jared Goff you know is the 2017 Jared Goff yeah. from watching film. Yes, there was no reason to look at last year's tape. Just because the system. The system is different. What do you admire? Uh, you know, it's, they, they all are all tied into what we do, and I, I do think our offense is one of the hardest offenses to, to game plan for. Uh, the things they do offensively, they put so much stress on you um, from a coverage standpoint and a run game standpoint. So you've got to be disciplined and you've got to be very um, detailed in your approach because uh, if you sleep for a second, they can get you on a big one. Aaron Lynch uh, played 30 snaps, I think, after being inactive in week one. What goes into that decision, whether he's up or down? Is it, is it matchup? Is it how he prepares himself? Uh, it's a little bit of everything. Um, there's, you, uh, it's like we've mentioned that there's, there's starters all across the, the defensive line, and they all work their tails off. I think Jeff Scanina does a great job getting them all ready to play. And there are matchup issues. There are... Uh, uh, things that we, we would need. You, you can only have so many up on game day. And uh, uh, he deserves to be up every week. But some, uh, sometimes you just, based on the matchup, uh, things might dictate otherwise.
You talk about K1 Williams. He had a really good game um, up in Seattle. Two pass breakups. Um, made a lot of good, nice reads, pre-snap recognition. Can you talk about his progress and, and how you see him fit moving forward? Uh, K1 is a uh, he, he's been he's been performing really well. Um, he'll even tell you one of those pass breakups were probably more of a PBU than anything, or a uh, missed up instead of a PBU. Um, uh, but he he does he does everything you ask. He does things the right way. He's physical. He plays fast, um, and he's just a very instinctive football player in there. So uh, again, like I, like I said, a lot of fo football players come in many shapes and sizes. So. You mentioned, mentioned Gurley's talents earlier. What did you notice that they did for him on Sunday versus the week before to kind of get him loose? They have their running, uh, their their running style. They run, they run the same offensive uh, run game pretty much that we do. Um, so if there was anything unique, it's it, it looked all the same to me with with their approach. What is, more. What is the kill zone? Kill zone? <laughs> yes. It's that check down area from the line of scrimmage to the five yard line, uh, five yards past the line of scrimmage. Um, kill or be killed in that range. <laughs> Legally. <laughs> Legally. What's that? With extreme violence. Right violently. Absolutely. DeForest Buckner looked like he had a really good game. What, what stood out uh, after reviewing the tape for you? Uh, he works his tail off. Uh, he plays with tremendous effort and he's a problem. He's just very unique in his size, his length, his strength. Um, uh, especially for a three technique. So he, he is a problem. He is someone that you have to deal with every week, and he's not something you can simulate on a week-to-week -week basis if you're an opposing offense, uh, defense trying to get it from your show team. Russell didn't play a lot in that first game, but what, what were your impressions of him against Carolina, and what are some of the things you've been working with him on in the last couple of weeks? Here? Uh, it's the same thing. They're all, uh, even when we're uh, offense, cards, uh, Defense servicing the offense from a card situation. I think last week was a great uh, chance for all those guys to, because Seattle runs pretty much the same scheme, for them to continue to, to develop and understand, well, I'm running the same scheme. So just as many reps as you can for those guys in any which way. And even when they're back there, always working on your fundamentals. Um, you can, anytime you put yourself on tape, uh, it's, it's kind of the message for everybody in that, uh, on that defense. When you put yourself on tape, when you're on the football field, represent what you're trying to represent and work the things that we're trying to get you to do um, from a fundamental standpoint and all within the, uh, uh, the schematics of what the offense needs. So, again, it's just individual work and all that stuff. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that they're all progressing every single day.